welcome back to the Google Workspace Update podcast from Strawberry 7. My name is Adam. And my name is also Adam. We're here to bring you the latest updates from Google Workspace. This podcast is available in audio format from your regular podcast provider and also in video format on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7. Let's get to it. On with the show. Um, Just before we start with this podcast, I just wanted to let everybody know that this podcast is a little bit longer than our normal podcast because Google have released a lot of updates and there's some really juicy bits that we want to talk about in there. So it's a little bit longer than our normal uh, podcast that we do. And before we get into the podcast itself, I just wanted to say that we have noticed that we've had some listeners from all around the world, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, So Adam and I would like to thank everybody who's been listening to this podcast. We've had some listeners here in the UK, but also North America, Brazil and the Philippines. We'd also like to say a special shout out to Mr. Reader. Uh, for your kind review on our podcast. We really appreciate that and we're so pleased that you're enjoying the podcast so far. I'll hand back over to Adam for all of our updates. Right, so the very first update that we have this week is to do with Google Chat. So a data loss prevention for Google Chat is now generally available. So back in July 2022, Google announced data loss prevention rules for Google Chat as an open beta. Over the next several weeks, weeks, this feature will become generally available for select Google Workspace editions. So with that, admins can selectively apply data protection rules to um, messages in groups, spaces, and or direct messages, uh, messages between internal and external participants, and message text and or attachments. Great. Okay, Adam. So we, before we started recording this podcast, we actually had to have a little look up to see what this actually meant. And it's, um, it's very, very interesting. Um, this is referring to data loss prevention, i.e. sensitive, cor- typically corporate data, typically in a company, it's like sensitive data. And the example that um, Adam and I used when we were talking about this together before recording was we were saying that The equivalent is, let's say that you had somebody in your Google chat who was outside of your organization or maybe had a personal account. If you took some data from your organization or maybe a file from your organization, particularly a file, I think, um, and you tried to share it to that external person or put it in a chat to that external person, the system will kind of flag up and say, no, you can't, you can't share this, this is sensitive, it contains sensitive information. I think that's kind of what this update is doing, isn't it, Adam? Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, so this is probably more for admins, but just so everybody is, is aware that it is now available. So then your admins can um, uh, run reports from within the um, uh, uh, Google Admin console and then to see if anything has been sent or, or anything like that that um, shouldn't have been. Yeah, that's so, so handy. I mean, I think it's mostly admins listening who are going to end up listening to this podcast. But just for anybody who isn't a um, an admin, you know, it is a real challenge um, for IT administrators to sort of balance security and usability together constantly. You're constantly trying to make things as easy as possible for people to use, but keep them secure and if everybody was completely honest and everybody just uh, did you know did everything perfectly sometimes it's people do it deliberately sometimes people just accidentally send files to the wrong person um, then it would be fine but we're all human we all make mistakes and um, trying to balance that security is very difficult and having the system sort of intervene on your behalf and say you either can't send this or you sure you want to send this I think is extremely useful so um when I think that's available soon, isn't it, Adam, from October the 11th? Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So rapid release and the scheduled release for domains is uh, going to start. It can take up to 15 days starting on uh, October the 11th. So this is going to be available to Google Workspace Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Standard and Education Plus. So this will not be available to Google Workspace Essentials, Business Starter, Business Standard, Business Plus, Enterprise Essentials, Frontline and Nonprofit, as well as Legacy, G Suite Basic and Business Customers. 
Wow. OK, so Google have really gone quite high end with this feature then. I mean, yeah, enterprise standard as the entry level is, is pretty is pretty high. So it's good that they've put it in education standard, though. Education standard and education plus. At least it's going to be available widely for the education customers. So that would really help some of our schools, I think. Great. Uh, thank you, Adam. Right, so that is the first update. Next up, uh, this is all to do with Jamboard. So we can now uh, join or start a meeting directly from Jamboard on the web to kickstart collaboration. So uh, Google are expanding interoperability with Google Meet and Jamboard. Well with... done. Well done, Adam, <laughs> pronouncing that. <laughs> uh, with, with the option to join or start meetings uh, directly from Jamboard on the web. So this makes it easier for you to seamlessly present your jam and start collaborating. So, and this feature is only available on the web. So, and here's why Google thinks you'd use it. So effective team meetings are a critical component to unlocking innovation, innovation facilitate, facilitated by human connection and collaboration. A key component of this is the ability to communicate seamlessly, whether you're joining in a meeting room or remotely. So bringing Google Meet into Jamboard allows everyone in the meeting to collaborate while having a conversation. So this is particularly helpful for, for presenters who can share their jam to illustrate a new idea or concept and receive their audience's reaction in one place. Okay. Uh, I, I love how exciting Google have made it sound that they've basically added a button into Jamboard <laughs> to be able to start a meeting straight from Jamboard. Um, but no, I mean, seriously, that is, that is a really handy feature. And uh, they've actually done this with a few of their other um, applications. I know that I'm looking at Google Docs right now and I can see that there's a meet link directly from in Google Docs. So it's a very similar thing. And it makes a lot of sense for it to be in Jamboard because it's natively a collaborative app anyway. And to be able to sort of go straight into a meeting from Jamboard, I can understand how that's really uh, quite clever. I tell you what would be interesting with this that I would like to see is I wonder if it's smart enough. I assume it is. I wonder if it's smart enough that, say, four of you are on a single jam in Jamboard and you're all seeing the Google Meet link, if you click that Google Meet link, it will all take you into the same meeting together because it will detect that you're all on one Jamboard together rather than four separate meetings. Yes, I think this is going to be almost like a window in window type um, thing. So then if you have your jam open, then say on the right hand side, there will be a, a pane, which essentially is the meet link. So it won't take you out of the jam and uh, in a totally separate window, then you have Google Meet. It will literally be your meeting is within the gap, within the jam itself. All right. Got it. OK. And this is going to be available in the near future. Is that right? Yes, so rapid release of this is starting on October the 20th. So in about a week or so from now, uh, scheduled release is going to be starting on October the 31st. And this is going to be available to all, to all Google Workspace customers, as well as legacy G Suite basic and business customers. So I definitely feel that this is going to be a really handy and useful update. So having the, the Meet option uh, it is already available within um, some other elements of Google Workspace. I know you mentioned Google Docs. It's also already there in Google Sheets and Slides. So it looks like um, Google is just implementing the same sorts of features throughout um, some other elements of Workspace as well. So this particular one is all for Jamboard. Great. OK, that's fantastic, Adam. Thank you. What have we got next? Right. Next one, uh, Google Sheets. So expanding smart chips to include events in Google Sheets. So in addition to the recent announcement, which I think we mentioned in one of our earlier podcasts, actually, uh, mm -hmm. to, of adding files to Google Sheets using smart chips, uh, Google are making it even easier for you to quickly insert calendar events into your Google Sheet. So uh, this additional smart canvas feature allows you to search for events from your calendar or copy calendar links and place them directly into Sheets. This will then, uh, you will then see the event's name and an actionable hover card in the cell. 
Okay, that's pretty cool. So just to just to fill any listeners in who are thinking what on earth are smart chips, um, they're Google's term for a feature whereby you can use the at symbol in say Google Sheets, Google Docs, something like that. And when you do at, similar to if you use WhatsApp, when you do at, it will come up with some names or allow you to type a name in. With smart chips, you do at and it will come up with a variety of actions. Now includes uh, actually adding calendar events. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, um, it does sound like they're, Google are just constantly expanding. They've got their thing and now they're expanding and growing. And so we've previously seen other announcements, uh, other updates where they've um, added chips and they're expanding on the the, the ads menu. Um, and so now it seems like they're doing more of the same. And yeah, as you say, th- this one is now including Google Calendar. So then you can add your Google Calendar event directly into Google Sheets if you want to. Brilliant, brilliant. That's um, That's great. And when... Is that going to be available, Adam? So a rapid release is for this, which can take up to 15 days. It's starting on October the 11th. Scheduled release, uh, which can also take up to 15 days, starting on October the 25th. And this is going to be available to all Google Workspace customers, as well as legacy G Suite, basic and business customers. And it's also available to everybody with a personal Google account as well. So literally available to everybody. Yeah, right across the board. Excellent, excellent. And um, yeah, we've got quite an exciting second update to Google Sheets as well, haven't we? Yeah, so this one, yeah, as you say, uh, also to do with Google Sheets. So you can now preview and interact with files using smart chips in Google Sheets. So back in 2021, Google announced the ability to insert smart chips for files and meetings in Google Docs. As an extension of the smart canvas, you can now add Google Drive files directly into Google Sheets as a smart chip. So it's it's very similar to the previous announcement that was to do with calendar events. This is also with just files within Google Drive. So this will make Mm -hmm. it much easier for you to quickly preview and interact with files within Google Sheets. Yeah, that's really cool. This is um, this is a feature that I personally get um, really excited about. I really, really use this feature very heavily within Strawberry 7 and we use it across uh, as a team. I think this is one of the most underutilised features of Google and I used to do this manually with putting in links like hyperlinks to other documents and we've actually got a video on our YouTube channel um, where I show you in one minute how to sort of hyperlink uh, into other documents and, and create like a power workflow through your different documents. But this is a, this is an enhancement of that because you're now able to put these files directly kind of in as smart chips uh, and, and they've actually expanded on that so you can even interact with them now in the smart chips. So I'm going to have to see what that looks like. And for anybody listening who's a bit confused and thinking what on earth is Adam going on about, I'll try and sort of explain what I mean by using this feature. If you imagine that you have a procedure document and we use these all the time within within Strawberry 7 to do certain tasks and let's say in your procedure document you're saying to somebody okay before you do this your prerequisites are you need to have followed this procedure document to do this and this procedure document to do this rather than just telling people what it is now you can actually put the document in as a direct link and you can actually have it as a smart chip and it can be right there so that they can click on it. I mean, now they can even interact with it, but they can click on it directly there and it's it's directly in. The easiest way of thinking about this is it's, it's almost turning your documents into like a web page, like how a web page works and you can click through a website to get to different places. You're sort of doing that, but with your documents. When I started using this, it really transformed the way that I worked and the way that I did things. I, you, I've i used it to create strategy documents, for example, business strategy documents, and kind of put all of my elements in. So here's my market, you know, my marketing funnel and my this and my that. And, my, and I just go to that one strategy document and I can get out to all of the other documents that I need to get to. I don't need to remember where they are or what folder they're in or anything like that. I go to that one strategy document and I've got all of those links out to everything. So I... I I really want to. I'm really looking forward to seeing this feature and seeing it in action, seeing what it looks like. 
Yes, uh, I, I definitely find it very helpful, but being uh, able to access documents within documents, um, mm. uh, as you say, and so this is just expanding on that. And so hopefully this just makes that feature even more helpful. So we can you can insert chips uh, in, into uh, Google Sheets in a couple of methods. So the first one is the at menu that we've mentioned before, where you literally type in at on your keyboard, and then there'll be a drop down menu with some options for you. So our previous update that we just mentioned. So you should also now be able to see your some calendar events. Or with this one, you'll see uh, various different um, uh, uh, Google documents, or you may see your uh, contacts, or there's going to be a variety of item of things that you have available from the at menu. Uh, another mes method of doing the same thing is you can navigate to insert smart chips, then file chip. And then from there, mm -hmm. you should be able to act, uh, add something in as well. And finally, you could also paste a Google Drive link directly into the cell hover over the preview, right click and select convert to file chip. And that should oh, also wow. give you the same result. Oh, wow. So I'm going to be able to go back through my documents. Sorry, when I say I go back through, I'll task you with <clears> doing <throat> it. But go, go through uh, go through our procedure documents and actually convert our existing links into file chips. I, uh, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Yes, um, cool. uh, okay. quite a lot of these updates, I think, that, that we personally, w within Strawberry 7, that uh, we will actually be using it ourselves. And this is another a example of that. I, I dare say we will definitely be using this one, probably quite heavily, actually, yeah. ourselves. <laughs> and um, even more so with the next update as well. Right, So, but before we move on, so uh, the rapid release of this one, uh, which can take up to 15 days, is starting on October the 11th. It's very similar... Uh, timelines with with all of the updates this week so that one starts on october the 11th scheduled release uh, can also take up to 15 days that's starting on october the 25th and this is going to be available to all google workspace customers as well as legacy g suite basic and business customers and it's also going to be available to uh, everybody with a personal google account as well great so just everybody fantastic um, yeah, you're excited. I think you're more excited than me about the next feature, aren't you, Adam? But I think this is really useful. So what's what's next up? Yeah, so just had uh, two updates to do with Google Sheets. And now I've got two updates to do with Google Meet. So you can now transcribe a Google Meet video meeting into a Google Doc, which hmm. I think that's really cool. So uh, cool. the transcribed file is saved into the host's Meet Recordings folder in Google Drive, similar to Meeting Recordings. This feature can only be accessed when using Google Meet on a desktop or laptop. So it won't be available if you're using Google Meet on a mobile device. Uh, at this time, this feature is, is only supported in English. So meeting transcripts automatically capture the meeting discussion, making it easier to follow up afterwards to serve as a record. I'd be interesting to see um, how well that transcribes um, um, my, my mutterings, to be honest. But, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, elaborating a little bit more. So for meetings with fewer or equal to 200 invitees, so it, it will have to be a, quite a large meeting if, you have, if you're maxed out with your 200 invitees, the meeting I'm host, co-host, or the transcripts initiator will receive a link to the transcription document via email after the meeting ends in a very similar matter, uh, in, in a very similar way to if you're recording your meeting, at the end of the meeting, you receive an email to say that your recording is ready. So then I expect you'll also receive a very similar email for this. Additionally, the transcript will automatically be attached to the associated calendar invites for the meeting. So I think that's quite cool. Uh, and for meetings with more than 200 attendees, the transcription will only be shared with the meeting organizer, host and co-host and individual users who initiated a transcription. For recurring mm -hmm. meetings, new, new transcription documents will be continuing, continually added to the calendar invite. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is possibly going to be a really, really useful um, accessibility feature, you know, for any people yes. who have a hearing issue or anything like that, you know, hearing disability, having, okay, it won't help during the meeting, but there'll be a transcription afterwards uh, of the meeting that I'll be able to read. So I can imagine that having some, some good accessibility 
related features there. Yes, I also think it may be particularly helpful. So uh, sometimes you'll have um, somebody join a, a meeting with the sole purpose just to take minutes for whatever is going on within that meeting. And I think this, um, not not to make them redundant, but I think th this would definitely uh, assist with them because, as I say, I'm not. Uh, it, it may transcribe everything absolutely perfectly, but um, it, I expect it may need a bit of editing or a bit of tweaking just to make it um, f formatted in in the way that everybody would want it to be. But I, I do think that this is quite quite a cool feature in itself. Yeah. So before joining a meeting, attendees will see a notification informing them when transcripts are active. So again, similar to when you're recording a meeting, uh, we're recording the meeting that Adam and I are on right now, and I can see uh, that this is being recorded. It's very clear. And so I expect it will be um, presented in a very similar way where you're just, it, it should be quite clear um, that uh, uh, transcripts are active for the meeting you're on at the time. Yeah. Okay. That's um. That's great. And when's that available? It's around about the same time in October, isn't it? Yes. So uh, rapid and scheduled release. Uh, potentially longer than fifteen days for feature visibility. It's starting on October the twenty fourth, uh, and this is going to be available to Google Workspace Business Standard, Business Plus, Enterprise Starter, Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus. Education Plus and the Teaching and Learning Upgrade customers. So it's not going to be available to everybody. So this is not available to Google Workspace Essentials, Business Starter, Education Standard, Enterprise Essentials, Education Fundamentals, Frontline and Frontline and nonprofits, as well as legacy G Suite basic and business customers. And this is also not available to users with a personal Google account. Okay, thank you for that, Adam. That's um, that's uh, brilliant. And next up, we've got another Google Meet update, haven't we? Yes. So, in room meeting, participants can now join breakout rooms. So, this is going to be related to uh, hybrid meetings. And so, then, if you have somebody uh, there physically in person with your meeting, and also some people that are uh, joining online as well. So when using Google Meet hardware devices, meeting hosts can now assign conference rooms to breakout rooms, extending breakout rooms to all meeting participants, whether they're joining remotely or in the office, ensures that, uh, in, sorry, and this ensures everyone can engage in collaborative working sessions. So uh, I, I'm not sure I even realized this when I was um, looking at this, actually, that there are there is Google Meet hardware. So um, it's essentially be like a, a, a tablet type device that you could use to join your meeting. So if you're there in person, you could have one of these uh, tablet devices. And w w within that, uh, when you're in your Google meeting, the meeting host should be able to uh, uh, div you up if they choose to so then you can have your breakout rooms whilst you're still within the meeting if that makes sense yeah yeah i understand yeah it's it's like it says it's so that everybody can engage in collaboration whether they're in the room or whether they're remotely and i can imagine that that is a bit of a challenge sometimes in a hybrid work environment where you've got say 10 people in a conference room but you do want them to be in a couple of breakout rooms two or three breakout rooms but sort of in whilst they're physically in the same room it's like it's a bit weird isn't it but uh i can see how that's going to help with those hardware devices i assume as well because they're google meet hardware devices it's going to be somehow easier or very intuitive to be able to assign them to those breakout rooms because they're google meet specific hardware devices you're going to kind of see them come up somehow or something like that Yes, uh, I, yeah, I, I'm not overly familiar with with the hardware myself, but uh, yeah, as you say, I'm sure. Well, ho hopefully, it should be quite intuitive and quite easy to use. So, I'm thinking this should essentially save time. So, if uh, during the meeting, if you're wanting to have breakout rooms, maybe historically you would need to end your current Google Meet. Everybody goes their separate ways, or maybe to break out into a couple of different rooms and then generate new uh, meetings between themselves to th to do their breakout session, then end that meeting and then rejoin the original one. I think this should um, el eliminate the need for that, and you can all just stay 
essentially within the same Google Meets for the entire session. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and when's this going to be available, Adam? So rapid and scheduled release for domains is going to be starting on oct- October the 24th. And this is going to be available to Google Workspace Essentials, Business Standard, Business Plus, Enterprise Starter, Enterprise Essentials, Enterprise Standard, Enterprise Plus, Education Plus, their teaching and learning upgrade, frontline and non-profit customers. So, and just a note on that, that all meeting participants can participate in breakout rooms. Great. Okay, that's um, that's brilliant. Thank you for that, Adam. And we've just got one more update. Um, and I'll be honest with our listeners, Adam and I don't really have much of an idea as to what this update means, but we're going um, to cover it anyway and have our best attempt at understanding it. So, uh, yeah, go for it, Adam. Right. So our final update from today is all about Google Voice. So using a what's called a SIP link, which is a session initiation protocol to link phone numbers from local carriers to Google Voice. So for Google Voice standard and premier customers, admins can now connect a SIP trunk with Voice. This allows phone numbers from local carriers to be used for Google Voice through a secure set of certified session border controllers, such as audio codes, uh, Cisco, Oracle, and Ribbon. So the SIP link makes it easier for Google's customers to livio, uh, liv- leverage leverage, leverage <laughs> the, the power of voice. So in, yeah. in the coming weeks, this feature will be available for new and existing voice customers in supported countries. So it's not available um, globally at the moment. I've got a very quick um, uh, handful list of voice of countries it's going to be available in. So I'll just run through it very, very quickly. We've got Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, UK, and some parts of the US. So it's not available uh, globally just yet. However, um, more countries will going to be uh, will become supported in the upcoming months. Hmm, that's quite interesting that there's actually more seems to be more coverage in Europe than there is in um, the US, which is quite surprising. Um, but Adam and I looked at this before recording, and our best guess is that what I think this is saying is that you can essentially use a phone number that you have already with Google Voice. I think that's kind of what it's getting at, and it's saying that you can do that by using these session border controls, which I'm guessing are sort of secure systems that's going to allow you to use your phone number through Google Voice. Um, Apologies to our listeners for us kind of floundering around, not really knowing exactly what this is. We don't actually use Google Voice very much, although maybe we should. And um, hopefully if you do use Google Voice, using SIP trunks with voice and using uh, SBCs or session border controls will make sense to you. So that will um, that will hopefully be useful. And thank you for that list of countries, Adam. Um, when is When are we looking at that coming out? So rapid release and scheduled release uh, is going to be beginning from October the 17th. And this is only going to be available uh, to customers with a voice standard and voice premier license. Okay, no problem. Well, thank you very much for that, um, for that, Adam. You can uh, take a long break after uh, after that. It was a very long um, update uh, session. And Adam said to me, he goes, "Oh my God!" After the last podcast, Google released everything. They've released all of the updates all at all at once. So well we, done, getting through. Yeah, that. last week we almost didn't have any updates at all, but then they snuck mm-hmm. one in uh, at the last minute. So so we did have the update for last week, and then suddenly they've just uh, pushed all of these out. These all um, came. Um, on, on Tuesday, all in one go. So um, Google have had a busy week updating uh, this week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's um, it's it's great to see um, so many of those updates and so many of them with really useful features that selfishly we're going to use within Strawberry Seven. But I encourage listeners to try out those, uh, especially the Smart Chips feature. I think it's one of the most amazing features of um, Google Workspace uh, around Docs, Sheets, and Slides with using those. So um, that's it, everybody. That's everything you need to know about latest updates happening around Google Workspace. Remember that there is a video 
video version of this podcast available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash strawberry7, and an audio version available from your regular podcast provider. Thank you again to everybody who's been listening, and please do leave us more reviews. We love reading them. And thank you very much for joining us this week. And we'll be back again next Monday with more updates. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.